It's just a science project. Silent breed is people! You know, a doctor friend once said the same thing to me. Frankenstein was his name. It's alive! It's alive! It's alive! That sounds like something out of science fiction. Please explain to me the scientific nature of the whammy. We live in a spaceship, dear. So? Yes, science! Program complete. Enter when ready. Hello and welcome to episode 331 of Science on Top. Today is Wednesday, the 17th of April, 2019. I'm Ed Brown, and I'm excited to be having a chat with astronomy lover, science communicator, and physics student, Kirsten Banks. Welcome back. Hello, it's good to be back. Well, I should note that since you were last on the show, you've been on commercial radio, you've been on TV, you've given a TEDx talk. So thanks for remembering us and dropping by our little podcast here, Now You're a Big Celebrity. Oh, my pleasure. (laughs) (laughs) Well, we were actually about to have a short break over Easter before returning with our next season, but I wanted to get you on for a special conversation because of some really exciting astronomy news that was announced last week. For the first time ever, we saw the first ever image of the event horizon of a black hole. And now before we get the angry emails and tweets from our enthusiastic but somewhat pedantic occasionally listeners, what we saw wasn't exactly an image of a black hole. Uh, You can't really image something that sucks all the light and doesn't reflect or emit any. Hawking radiation notwithstanding. Anyway, (laughs) so am I right in saying that what we saw was the shadow of the event horizon surrounded by the ring of super hot material orbiting and being sucked into the black hole. Is that close enough? There have been a few interpretations of this photo. One being, <laughs> yes, the shadow, uh, but another one being the silhouette, which mm-hmm. I guess are both kind of one and the same if you, when mm-hmm. you think about it. But all in all, we've, we've directly imaged a black hole somehow or other, and it is absolutely <laughs> amazing. <laughs> Yeah, now that you mentioned that, I think silhouette's probably the better word for it because a shadow is projected onto something. This is the obscuration of the black hole, mm. I guess you could say, or of the material around it. Um, it's, it's an extraordinary feat and it's a very cool image. Um, I don't know how to describe it better than to say it's a round, orange, yellowy ring with a jet black interior. Um, that's, that's pretty good. It's a pretty good description. <laughs> With a brighter sort of corner and, yeah, the rest is a little bit dimmer, but still mm. there. And the, the, the silly question almost, I say silly because it, it's almost trivialising what is an extraordinary feat, but why is it blurry like that? I mean, we've got very powerful telescopes and everything. We've seen fantastic imagery from Hubble and all of that. Why is this blurry? That's a very good question. I'm actually not sure exactly why it's blurry, but also, is it really blurry? Because what we're seeing is kind of like a a gradient of the heat and the temperature that's in this sort of accretion disk around a black hole. So how I see it, honestly, that photo could have been green. Let's be honest here. (laughs) They could have chosen a green colour scheme, but they went with orange because that's what the, you know, the CGI and that's what the artist impression is. And generally, when things are hot, they look red <laughs> as well. Well, this is true. And so, now, now, when you start talking CGI, people are going to start saying, so is it a photo or is it not a photo? And it is and it isn't because this is radio waves, isn't it? This isn't an optical image. Yes, it's, it's, it's an image in radio. So they've sort of skewed that radio wavelength into the optical one and sort of made a best guess of what it probably would look like, I guess, because for all we know, it really is green when we get there or purple. Exactly. But in fact, it from... could be, It could. Well, I mean, all in all, it is radio. It is in radio light, but we can't see radio, so we have to interpret it in the way that we can. And orange yep. is good. It's good. It gives us a fairly realistic idea of what we think it would look like, but it's still an impressively cool uh, <laughs> image, I would say. It uh, sure is. And, and that, that sort of leads to a next question, of course, of why is it radio and not optical? Um, and I guess that's because of the scale that we can get with radio. We can have a telescope essentially the size of the Earth. 
which is impractical to build exactly. an optical telescope that big. Just, just a little bit. Just yeah. planning um, <laughs> permits and all that sort of stuff, yeah. <laughs> mm, you, you are essentially taking out half of the Earth when doing that as well. Yeah. Uh, but, so, I mean, with the reason why it's also radio, to my understanding, is that there's a lot of stuff, visible stuff, in the way of the black hole. So we're looking out towards a galaxy called M87, one of the biggest galaxies that we know of in this particular area. And it, being a big galaxy, there's obviously a lot of stars in it and a lot of gas and dust as mm. well. Uh, mostly stars in this one because it's a big elliptical galaxy. But there's a lot of light stuff to look through, stuff that we can see with optical telescopes. So we have to kind of ignore that sort of light and peer into the very center and that's easier to do with radio light also like you said we've essentially made a telescope the size of the earth <laughs> which the bigger your telescope the better your telescope that's always a good rule of thumb aperture is everything in this sort of case mm -hmm. and so obviously it's not a giant radio telescope this is uh, i think it was eight telescopes around the world. So it was Greenland, Hawaii, North and South America, Europe. There was one in Antarctica as well, which is really cool. Mm. So I made the same mistake as well, saying that it's eight telescopes. It's actually not just eight telescopes. Right. It's eight observatories, where a couple of these observatories have an array of telescopes. So uh, Unhel and I actually added it all up, and it was up, up to, I think it was about 60 telescopes in total. Okay. So this, that's, that's there's more a lot of telescopes are used in this. <laughs> it is. It is. Essentially eight locations, yeah. we'll say, around the world, uh, all connected up through interferometry. So essentially you have all these telescopes looking at the same thing at the same time, which effectively gives you a telescope the size of our planet. Mm. Yeah. And that's really, really cool because it, this interferometry is essentially, I guess you'd say, filling in the gaps uh, of a, sort of a guesswork between these little snapshots from different locations. And then, then they line it up. I think one of the supercomputers that they use to process all this information has like 800 CPUs all networked together. They line it up taking That's into... A lot. Yeah. And they take into account like the difference of the Earth's shape because, you know, it's bumpy. There are mountains and different altitude and everything. They have atomic clocks to synchronize it all. And it's pretty impressive because uh, I read also this is five petabytes of data they ended up with. Oh, my goodness. It's so much data. And, and, and I don't even oh. know how to give a good example of how big that is. Mm. There's a photo online somewhere of someone, of the uh, the woman, Katie Bowman, standing in front of... The, so the, many the, hard drives. I guess the hard drives. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. It's a whole table of hard drives. Yeah. And... Each observatory generated per day about as much data as the Large Hadron Collider generates in a year. Wow. Um, so, oh. I, this is the big uh, data era that we've been talking about where we're getting these huge telescopes and observatories and instruments that can just generate so much data to crunch. We're excited about this image of a black hole. The data that you're going to get from... Well, the information that you can glean from the data that went into that is also going to tell us so many more things about black holes and stuff. So it really will. Like, who who knows what's on the horizon? Honestly, the event horizon. Sorry, so. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> but one of the cool things about this, of course, is it is as conclusive as you can get. Really, evidence that Einstein was right black holes do exist we've sort of had these indirect proofs of that we've had gravitational waves gravitational lensing all these things mm. but this is direct conclusive proof really isn't it it is it, it's it's one of the final pieces of the puzzle of course there's more pieces of this puzzle to put together and there always will be of course as well yeah. we have a whole universe of puzzle pieces to put together that we don't even know exist yet yeah. I, I just keep coming back to the awesome power of this planet-wide telescope because even though it's a large black hole it's 6.5 billion times the mass of our sun it's oh yeah it's a long way away and it's really tiny in a really large uh, galaxy 
Do you have any information on like the, the, the scale or the resolution that we're talking here? Because it's a lot more uh, precise than the Hubble telescope, isn't it? Yes. So basically, I'm going to start with the black hole. So you said it's six and a half billion times the mass of the sun. First of all, whoa, right? that's <laughs> a lot of mass. <laughs> Second of all, this, this 6.5 billion mass, uh, solar mass, mass is squished into a small size that's this, about the size of our solar system, which I know seems big to us, but this is tiny compared to the entire universe and the galaxy that this black hole is in, but also 6.5 billion suns squished into the into the solar mm. system. Just mm. imagine that for a second. <laughs> you can't. No. <laughs> you can't imagine that. There's no room. <laughs> There's no room for that. Exactly. Um, and... Of course, this, this galaxy is about 55-ish million light years away. So it is pretty far. It's not too far on the scale of the universe, but it is pretty far. Hmm. And being such a small area of space as well, 55 million light years away, you're essentially trying to look for a golf ball on the moon. <laughs> wow. That's the sort of scale <laughs> they're talking about. Yeah. And was it? And in fact, there are two golf balls. I was on the moon. about to say, didn't they play <laughs> golf on the moon? <laughs> <laughs> they did. Well, when you uh, next go out and look at the moon, try and see if you can spot one of them, and then uh, you'll know yeah. <laughs> just how incredible this achievement is. Uh, mm. Yeah, it's so cool. When you look at the image, I think what a lot of the astronomers and astrophysicists who saw it said was. Yeah, it looks exactly like what we thought it would look like. We sort of thought it would look like this sort of round disc and everything. But that's not entirely true because it all depends on things like the angle that the black hole is uh, in our direction and all that sort of stuff, what angle it's pointing at, I guess you'd say. Um, Veritasium, Derek Muller, did a fantastic video clip uh, on YouTube showing all the different permutations that it could have been. And there were ways where we could see what we're actually seeing is light, as we said, from around and behind the black hole being bent around it. Mm. Some of these light rays go loop the loop around the black hole several times before heading in our direction and things like that. There are so many different images that we could have seen. It's almost remarkable that we saw exactly what we sort of predicted it would be, I guess. Yeah, that is actually quite cool. I didn't realise that. Yeah. Um, well, one thing I want, wanted to point out as well is this was one of two uh, black holes that they observed. And Yes, of course. During the announcement, I, I heard a lot of astronomers were saying, you know, and this is like a um, an Apple uh, a announcement where they say, okay, and here's, here's the new iBook, uh, iPad, here's the new iPhone, and... Th and uh, but there's one more thing at the end where he will unveil the next whatever. Everyone was expecting mm. to get this other object. What was that? Yes, everyone was expecting, even I was expecting this one, the supermassive black hole at the centre of our galaxy, Sagittarius A star. I, I, <laughs> which is a lot smaller. It's a bit smaller. It's about four, four and a half billion times the mass of our sun which doesn't sound small okay <laughs> <laughs> relatively smaller and also apparently because it's a lot closer it there was a really good analogy said by katie mack on twitter sagittarius a star is like trying to take a photo of a hyperactive toddler that's right <laughs> And you're just going to get an even blurrier photo apparently because it is a lot closer it's it, it's it's more uh let's say active in its movement, so with with M eighty seven star because it's a lot further away, it appears to be a lot more stable, to my understanding. Right. So it was easier to photograph with, albeit with really good aim, to find that <laughs> golf ball on the moon. But it was a lot lot easier to photograph. But I'll tell you what, everyone was on, wanting to, everyone was believing that we were going to see Sagittarius A star. We we're going to see a photo of the center of our mm. galaxy. But uh, no dice. No dice for that one. No dice. Uh, and also, I think it, it doesn't feed as much as mm. the uh, black hole that we did see in M87. Uh, it's it's not as hungry, <laughs> as I'm saying. And I don't... That's an <laughs> anthropomorphization of a black hole. 
But if it's not as active, you don't get those hot gases and plasma and material that's orbiting it. So there's less light to actually capture, of course. So yes, disappointing. And actually, but- speaking of um, Sagittarius A star, it brings up an interesting point that I always love to giggle about when talking about black holes. So obviously, especially with Sagittarius A star, the the, the words A star mm. is in the name, <laughs> but it is not. A star. Well, not anymore. It's a black hole. <laughs> no, that's uh, kind of kind of true. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's. I just find it so funny. In M87, the black hole in the middle of M87 is called M87 star. Yes. Like guys, we are barreling towards a misunderstanding here. <laughs> but also, it, it's a funny thing. It's not spelt out S T A R. It's an asterisk. So. That's right. But I guess Sagittarius A asterisk sounds even weirder. <laughs> yeah. It's it's A star. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, but I, I should I should let people know that um, the the star the asterisk is just a marker to say this is an interesting object. So ah, I didn't realize that. that. Oh, that's very mm-hmm. cool. <laughs> the awesome. more you know. The more you know, indeed. And now we know a lot more about black holes, and we are going to find out so much more. As I said, there's five terabytes worth of data that we've got to sift through uh, to interpret more. There's a mm. lot of stuff that we don't understand about or black hole evolution. Do they expand as their galaxies expand? Uh, the rates of rotation and things, because we did find out this particular black hole is rotating and some of them are uh, sort of stacked, static. They don't rotate, apparently. So more more puzzles to... I unravel. certainly need to learn more about black holes. <laughs> yeah, that's the exciting part, isn't it? There's so much that's more to it. learn. Exactly. Okay, well, I think that wraps it up. So thank you so much for talking with me, Kirsten Banks. My pleasure. Thanks for letting me gush about this black hole. (laughs) (laughs) Anytime. Is there anything else you want to plug or where should people go to find you on the internet? Uh, People should come and follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook at Astro Kirsten. My TED Talk will be available on YouTube sometime in the future. So please watch that. It's kind of cool, I think. Yeah, no, it is cool. It is cool. <laughs> All right. What's the topic? Can you tell us the topic? <laughs> yes, I can. Now that I've actually given the talk, I can reveal all. Mm-hmm. The topic is 65,000 years of astronomy. And so it's a, it's a story of how wow. I became to love astronomy and Aboriginal astronomy and telling, telling the story of how we're losing touch with the culture behind the night sky because we are losing the darkness to overbearing bright city lights. Right. It sounded really interesting and then you ended with a downer. (laughs) (laughs) It it makes you think. makes you think. (laughs) It does. And light pollution is a huge problem uh, for astronomers and all sorts of things from plant life to animal life as well. So it's Mm. that's a very interesting topic. And as soon as that's out, we'll be tweeting it and spreading the word like mad. So keep an eye out for that. And we'll have all those links and links to more information about the black hole photo on the website and in the show notes at scienceontop.com slash 331. And you can also head to scienceontop.com slash donate to be one of the excellent fans who help keep us going. Like I said, we're going to take a few weeks off and then we'll be back for our next season sometime in May. Join us then. So the Event Horizon Telescope isn't one telescope, it's multiple. Yeah. They're all linked together. The data is captured and then uh, taken offline and processed over the course of many months. Now, uh, produce that. Yeah, and the dimensions are massive. You talked about it, it's the small telescope, but the black hole is much, 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 much bigger than the planet Earth, for instance. Oh, it is. Okay, so the black hole is, is um, six and a half billion times the mass of our sun, um, packed into a tiny region, relatively speaking. That's about the size of the solar system, give or take. Um, We actually looked at two, and uh, we looked at the one in the center of our own Milky Way, which is a smaller black hole, but because it's closer, we thought we'd get a better look at it. For some reason that we haven't yet figured out, we couldn't detect the one in our um, Mm. Milky Way. So we went for this even larger black hole in this nearby galaxy, and thankfully it was revealed. Where Where do things go when they get sucked into the black hole? Ah, we don't know. Okay, so they, well, physically, they go into the black hole, they um, get crushed into ever smaller regions, ever closer to the uh, the black hole. All that mass going into a region of zero size is called the singularity, infinite density. Yes. 
physics breaks down. I remember hearing about that in Interstellar, the yeah. Singularity. That's it. That, uh, for a lot of people, that is where they got well, their that, that black hole education.